Okay, good morning. Um, I got a late night uh, <clears throat> request on uh, one of the problems that was due uh, last night. And uh, I was already sleeping. Uh, I found it this morning in my inbox. And so um, it looks like uh, some of the students are still in progress on this problem. There may be one or two who haven't started it. Uh, but it looks like a uh, majority of the students have already finished it. Anyway, I'm going to try and uh, cover the basics of uh, this problem um, that covers uh, accounting rate of return, payback period, and net pr present value on uh, uh, investments that are being considered by a business. Uh, these are pretty uh, standard, run-of-the-mill types of uh, scenarios for uh, this material. And uh, the net present value uh, calculations can be a little tricky. Uh, they take uh, a little bit of uh, extra thought. But anyway, let's see if we can uh, get through these. So first of all, we have a uh, <clears throat> company, Balloons by Sunset, BBS, is considering the purchase of two new hot air balloons so that it can expand its Desert Sunset tours. So this is a typical, uh, uh, should we invest or not type of decision. Uh, various information about the pro proposed investment follows. Initial investment, two hot air balloons would uh, cost 454000 Useful life, this is useful economic life for accounting purposes. Uh, and generally useful life ties into a uh, uh, period of benefit. And what that refers to is the period over which uh, the company would be able to realize uh, economic benefit in the way of an income stream. So uh, that's estimated at nine years. Salvage value, 49000 Salvage value is uh, the estimated uh, residual or the amount that the company uh, expects to be able to uh, receive at the end of the nine-year uh, economic useful life you know by way of sale or trade or uh, salvage um, and the annual net income generated uh, is 37,682 finally uh, BBS's cost of capital 8% uh, this is generally an internal uh, rate used by the company for evaluating these types of investment decisions. Okay, um, assume straight line depreciation. So let's do these uh, one at a time. First of all, the uh, two easier calculations, accounting rate of return. Now to get the accounting rate of return, uh, it's, some, it's fairly straightforward. We simply take the annual net income and divide it by the initial investment. So let's bring this uh, spreadsheet over. Oops. I need I need uh, uh, an area here that would let me dra uh, drag it. Okay. So this is. Uh, PA 11 dash 1. Okay, so um, number 1 uh, accounting rate of return. So we take uh, the annual net income. Uh, 
of um, 37,682. And we divide it by the investment amount of uh, 454. And that would give us an accounting rate of return of and let's format this as a percentage eight point three percent let's get this formatting uh, all right here okay so 8.3 percent and of course we need to um, uh, this is interesting it shows percentage and yet for some reason when I uh, input it it's uh, giving us a dollar sign I'm not sure why that's happening but let's check this and see if we're uh, okay with this calculation and we are okay and the answer shows a dollar sign but what we're really calculating here is a percentage okay I'm not sure why they have the dollar sign in there but that's something that the programmers uh, put in there okay so that's uh, <clears throat> our accounting rate of return now payback period is similar but different okay in the payback period, what we need to do is take the initial investment and divide it by the annual net cash flow. And so we have net income, but we need to convert uh, annual net income to uh, annual ca net cash flow. And to do that, uh, we need to add back the uh, depreciation that uh, would have been calculated as part of that annual net income. So let's see what that looks like here. Uh, number two, oops, number two, payback period. And so we take our investment amount, which is our 454. And we divide it by uh, our net cash flow, annual net cash flow. And so to calculate uh, annual net cash flow, we take our net income. which is uh, 37,682 and we add back depreciation expense okay and so um, let's show that right below here if we take our investment 454 and subtract our estimated salvage of uh, 49 and that would give us net depreciable value um, Oh, 
a 405 and then uh, divide by our estimated useful life in years which is uh, 9 and so our estimate of depreciation expense would be uh, net depreciable value divide by estimated useful life 45,000 so we add back our depreciation 45,000 why don't we take uh, this information and move it uh, over okay add back depreciation expense And this is our calculation here. And so this would give us net income plus our depreciation expense would give us annual net cash flow. And so our calculation would be, let's format Let's format uh, these cells as currency. Um, and so our payback period, payback period would be our uh, investment divided by our estimated net cash flow, 5.49. But that's not a number, that's not currency, that's a number, 5.49 years. Okay. Years. And let's get the formatting right on uh, this guy here. Okay, so for payback period, we take the investment and divide it by the net cash flow that we expect to get as a result of that investment. And that gives us a rough indicator as to how long it'll take us to recoup uh, that investment. Uh, that's not a fancy calculation, but it's, uh, it's uh, like accounting rate of return. It gives you uh, one point of reference with respect to uh, the decision as to whether or not uh, you should make that investment. Okay. Okay. Oh, let's check it. We need to check it. Um, here. Let's get the right uh, format in here. Okay, that looks better. Let's format these the same way. There we go. Okay. Maybe we can put a box around this calculation. There we go. Okay, so 5.49 years. Let's see if that's correct. And check my work. And we are okay.
All right, so two for two. Now let's uh, get into the one that is probably a, a little bit more uh, ca uh, ca complicated, and that is uh, the net present value. So net present value uh, is a concept that is quite useful in accounting and in finance uh, types of situations. Net present value, let's get this formatted consistently. Okay. Now in the net present value, uh, we compare the amount of the investment. We compare the amount of the investment to the present value of the cash flows that we expect that investment to generate over time. The present value of the cash flows that we expect to receive from that investment over um, the life of that investment. So, and if you think about that for a few minutes, I think you would f you would see the logic in that. And the reason we use uh, net present value calculations is because of the basic uh, a concept and assumption in accounting uh, of the time value of money any future payment of money includes an interest factor uh, because money earns interest over time so uh, in calculating net present value and in comparing uh, apples with apples oranges with oranges we need to remove uh, the amount of that future payment that would be uh, interest. And of course, uh, that interest amount would, is always based on uh, the implicit interest rate uh, assumed uh, and the amount of time that has transpired into the future between now and then, the time that that payment is received. Because interest is always calculated as rate times uh, principal times rate times uh, time and so uh, the two factors that determine the amount of interest in any payment are basically the interest rate and the amount of time that has transpired uh, uh, between now and the time that that payment is received okay so hopefully that makes sense that's a basic um, accounting concept so, uh, let's see, our initial investment is um, our 454, so I'm going to bring this down, and then uh, our net present value of future cash flows net present value of cash flows would include uh, our net income adjusted for depreciation and so we've already done that, that calculation uh, up above here and so we take our net cash flow uh, amount over life of investment and I'm going to simply drag this uh, down from here and we apply our factor now this is where it gets a little bit uh, tricky a little bit complicated it just becomes a matter of getting used to using uh, the net present value tables and these tables are uh, provided f for you in the textbook and so basically for the for these uh, calculations uh, we need to present value two different uh, cash flows one cash flow is an annual cash flow received every year over a period of nine years which is the economic life of this investment 
So where we have an, an, uh, a repeating cash flow over a period of years, and each uh, year the amount of the cash flow is expected to be exactly the same. So where we have equal uh, cash flows over a period of time, uh, we call that an annuity. And so uh, the accounting math gurus have uh, put together tables, factor tables for us to use in these situations that uh, can significantly uh, cut down the amount of uh, math calculations that we need to do. And so in this uh, first calculation, to get the net present value of the recurring cash flow over the nine-year economic life of the investment, we can go to the uh, table 11.4a on page 492 in the textbook and that table gives us the present value of an annuity factors so the annuity is 82,682 we expect to receive uh, that amount every year over nine years of the investment and so to be able to uh, get the right factor to use we need to know the interest rate and the interest rate is the rate given uh, in the problem and that was the uh, cost of capital which is eight percent so we need to know the interest rate so let's put uh, net present value factor table 11.4 11.4a And, and we also need to know the number of periods that we're working with. So our uh, interest rate based on the, on the company's cost of capital is 8%. And the number of periods would be the uh, period of time over which we expect to uh, use that investment. So if we find the intersection between nine periods on the left side and 8% over uh, to the right on the top, we find that the factor, and you always want to make sure you get the right factor, is 6.2469, 6.2469, okay, 6.2469, and so that would give us, if we multiplied the factor times the amount of the annuity payment uh, that would give us the net present value of the net cash flows over time or over the the period of time that we expect the investment to uh, be uh, providing us with net co net cash flows or income so we take our uh, annuity amount and multiply by our factor and we need to format that as currency so the net cash flows of the The net cash flows of the uh, of the uh, I'm sorry. The net present value of the net cash flows is five hundred sixteen thousand five hundred six point nineteen. Now we also have a second cash flow to uh, include in that calculation, and that is the amount of the salvage value that we expect to receive at the end of that investment period of nine years. And so that would be part of uh, our investment uh, decision because uh, besides the net income adjusted for depreciation that we're going to receive over a nine-year period, 
at the end of nine year period when we get rid of uh, the investment we expect to get a little bit more uh, money in the way of uh, salvage value and so uh, this calculation is a little bit more uh, is a little simpler salvage value uh, which is given at 49,000 now because we need to use a present value factor to present value this payment but because this is a one time payment uh, we don't use the present value of an annuity table we use the present value of one dollar table and that table is 11.2a on page 49 and so let's show that as net present value factor table 11.2a and the interest rate the i and the time period the n is the same they're the same uh, for this calculation as uh, it was for our previous calculation I should have shown that here uh, the interest rate is 8% and the time period n is 9 years okay So anytime we use present value calculations, we know we always need to know the I and the N, the interest rate, and the number of years uh, referred to as N. So this is the same. <clears throat> but for this calculation, it being a one time payment, we use a different table, the present value of one dollar. And that's uh, table eleven point two A. So that factor for eight percent nine years is point five zero zero two and so to get the net present value of salvage value in nine years uh, that amount now this when when we uh when we do this calculation i think it makes it a little easier to see how the present value uh works the present value calculation works what this is basically saying is that we're going to receive $49,000 let me let me format that as well we're going to receive excuse me we're going to receive $49,000 um, at the end of nine years but because of the time value of money concept and the assumption that future payments always include interest and in our uh, example interest at eight percent and the payment being nine years hence uh, this payment of $49,000 includes interest and so by using the present value factor uh, applied to the, the future payment it gives us the amount of that payment considered to be principal so of this forty nine thousand dollars twenty four five oh nine eighty is considered principal and the difference between twenty four five oh nine and forty nine thousand is interest okay and so again in making these net present value investment type decision calculations we want to we want to uh, eliminate the interest and just look at the principal <clears throat> so and again if you think about it it makes sense to do so <clears throat> so we have the present value of the cash flows over nine years every year for nine years and let's uh, show that there plus the present value of the uh, final payment which is the salvage value at the end of nine years and that the two together would give us a net present value of 
the investment. <clears throat> so this plus this 541-01599 and of course like with everything else um, we need to check it 541-01599 it says uh, use appropriate factors from the tables do not round intermediate calculations negative amount should be indicated by a minus sign round the, round the final answer to the nearest whole dollar so our 541 01599 becomes 541016 and of course the last thing we need to do is check it keep our fingers crossed that we're okay and uh oh we got something wrong here and so I need to do a little bit of uh, troubleshooting this might be uh, why I got the email uh, asking for some assistance here so uh, I will be back shortly okay that troubleshooting uh, took uh, a couple minutes and I uh, shoot I was able to see my uh, error um, the I was showing the amount of the net present value of cash flows which which is the present value of the amounts to be received I was showing that as the answer but actually the answer is asking for net present value of the investment and so the net present value of the cash flows which we did calculate correctly 541 is then compared to the investment amount itself which is 454,000 and by doing this net present value calculation we then see that the net present value uh, after considering the amount that needs to be invested is the difference between what we will receive over the nine-year period and the amount we invest now or 87,015.99 and that's our uh, that's the answer that they're asking us for 87016 rounded and uh, when we do the uh, check my work that's correct okay sorry about that um, I had done the calculation correctly but the last step uh, was missing okay and then finally uh, in number four uh, they're basically asking us for uh, the same information except instead of a cost of capital of eight percent assume it's eleven percent so when we do this I think uh, we can see um, it, I think this makes it a little clearer as to how this all works so let's copy this down and see if we can use the basic uh, framework here so our initial investment is the same the uh, net cash flows over the life of the investment um, is going to be the same and uh, that is uh, d20 but our factor is going to change because now instead of eight percent we're using eleven percent so uh, what is what does the higher interest rate do 
to our calculation. Well, if a, a, a larger part of the payment is interest, that means a smaller part of the payment, the present value, which is what we're calculating, is going to be principal. So we would expect this factor to be um, lower and this calculation to be lower. And so if we go back to table 11.4a and find uh, the factor for n equals 9, i equals 11, we see that it's 5.5370. And uh, the present value of our payments become lower. And the same thing will apply to the present value of the final payment, which is the salvage value. And for that, we go to table 11.2a for i equals 9, I'm sorry, uh, n equals 9 and i equals 11. And the factor there is 0 0.3909, 0 0.3909. So again, our present value calculation was lowered. And so now the net present value of the cash flows is uh, significantly lower because the interest portion is significantly higher. The amount of the cash flows don't change, but the, the, the uh, uh, portions to principal, which is the present value, and interest change. Okay, so instead of um, 8 and 2, it now becomes more like 6 and 4 kind of a thing. That's a, just a simple way to look at it. So now the net present value of the investment is much lower. It was 87000 at 8%. Now it's 22000 at 11% because of the much higher amount of those payments allocated to interest. Well, anyway, let's see that that's correct, first of all, before we uh, finish this off. 22,964.33. And let's check that. And we can see that we are okay. Okay. Uh, I think that does it. Um, let's see what happens when we submit. I think we have uh, uh, 13 and a half over 15. Now, what in the world did we miss? We missed something. 8.3, I'm not sure what we missed here. Um, because as far as I can tell, as far as I can tell, uh, we got it all correct. Eight point three, five point four nine, eighty seven and twenty two. I'm not sure why um, it's given us only thirteen and a half. Uh, but if you uh, got the same uh, situation happening with your solution assuming you got all four of these correct uh, let me know and I can I can easily make an adjustment uh, for on your point total for the point and a half that you might be missing okay anyway uh, I think that does it I'll get this um, uh, uh, processed and uh, sent out to all of you
have a good one. Let me know if you guys need uh, any more help, if you have any questions with uh, anything else or the final project. Uh, it's almost over, gang. Um, just a week left to go, and uh, it's uh, it'll be over. All right. Take it easy and talk to you again soon. Aloha.